Great. Should we send Sarah a text saying, where are you? <laughs> sure. Okay, she forgot that it was at six or something because she missed this last month. Okay, I'm gonna um, mute myself for the most part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, well, Leslie's here now. Uh, I just sent a text. Thanks, Pat. But well, we have a quorum without her, so, and it's time. Okay. So we were going to have start off with a public hearing this evening, but the um, notice in the paper would have had to have been put in like the day after a previous meeting and that was not done it's sort of oversight not realizing how critical that timing was so we have to postpone it to the 21st so um we are going directly to the regular meeting for this first meeting in september of 2022 and call the meeting to order are there additions or deletions to the agenda Once I don't have anything to add. And I would ask Sarah whether or not we have the information, anything on the, uh, uh, the revisions to rules of order regarding privilege of the floor, but she's not here to ask. <laughs> so we'll leave it on. And I was she did have, she, she what? She did have, um, it, I, and I thought it's in the, isn't it in the agenda? Well, there's, there's, I clicked a link on the agenda and it was a link to the rules of order as they currently exist. Yeah, that's what I found. But the, um, can you not see the, the suggested edits? Amending section six, public participation of the rules of order of the town yeah. board. Yeah, I saw that. Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't see it. It was an addition. Yeah, it's, all, it's like right on the front page. No, I missed that because I didn't look close enough. That's why. Huh. Well, okay, that's good. Um, we'll we'll have to screen share when we get to it because I didn't. Have, yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see it until I looked at the uh, that, that it was linked on the agenda because it's not in the meeting uh, materials folder. Yeah, it was in a in a different folder. Why can I not find the agenda right now? Sorry. I don't know. It's pretty, well, pretty I found it. Accessible multiple ways. <laughs> so they're not being in addition additions. Any, any additions or deletions yet? Um, privilege of the floor. Does anyone who would like to address the board in any matter? Rhonda. Uh, I just wanted to, besides the two emails that I sent to you, I just wanted to say that. I have long been a supporter of the trail, the bike trail down to Tioga County. And uh, I hope that someday it will go through and that Tioga County will see how great it is and will connect to it. But I definitely support uh, your letter. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, yeah, I have something. Um, uh, can you go hear ahead, me all right? Gary. Yep, you can. Go ahead, Gary. I, I just uh, looking down through the agenda here. Gary's talking. And I'm looking Gary? at the, pardon me? No. Oh, I thought somebody said something. Somebody. Uh, the capital uh, the capital uh, projects. Right. Uh, I was looking at some of them. And are any of those going to be up for discussion at all? Yes. Okay. But basically, all of them are going to be up for discussion. It's just sort of the first pass at um, re revising the list that we cr created last year. Um, we we have a committee now to sort of look at it and and uh, uh, attach some numbers to it and and propose a prioritization, which is met once is going to meet again on Thursday, but um, we bring it back to the to the board tonight just to make sure that there aren't things that people think ought to be on there that aren't on there uh, and things that are on there, maybe that oughtn't to be on there. Good. So, um, 
So it's just, a, you know, we're in process. Okay. Anything else, Gary? Uh, no, it'd just be nice to get back to uh, in-person meetings again. We may be doing that next time. Yeah. Um, next up was Ted. Teresa's, oh, Teresa's. Yeah, I know, but Ted has a hand up first. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Oh, hiya. Um, I just want to let you know that um, this Sunday at 2 p.m. in the park, Dotson Park, we're going to have a great demonstration uh, and display of knife and hatchet throwing by um, mm -hmm. uh, Paul Macaron. And uh, it'll, it'll be mostly watching, but he has he brings some display of knife and hatchet memorabilia. He is the world champion knife thrower, uh, for what it's worth. He'll probably also, if he's feeling up to it, he'll demonstrate his speed throw, where he is the four-time consecutive world champion. And in interviewing him uh, a week ago or so, I asked uh, about... Uh, well, the conversation came about, I was asking, does anybody uh, ever bore a hole in your target and put a camera behind it to get a, a um, target's eye view? And he said, oh, all the time, which was a great disappointment to me. But then he went on to say that he also gets a lot of people who volunteer to stand in front of the target. And, I was going to uh, say, I was going to, has he tried to split any apples on anybody's head? But uh, yeah. uh, I, He didn't go into details, but I'm going to advise you that if you do attend, please do not offer to stand <laughs> in the target. The chances of losing somebody valuable are just too large. Yeah. Yeah. Two o'clock Sunday. Thanks. Teresa. Hi. <clears throat> A neighbor of mine stopped me the other day and asked me this question. I don't, didn't have an answer. And so I'd like to pose it to the board. They asked me what the law was with regard to abandoned buildings in the town. And they specifically pointed out three of them on 96B. Mm -hmm. One of course being right next door to the town hall. Um, you know, I didn't know what to tell them and you know, they didn't want to make a lot of noise about it. They were just interested, which made me interested. Mm -hmm. um, what is the process with abandoned buildings? Um, well, without, without researching it a little bit, I, I don't, I, at one point I knew, uh, if there's state law that you can cite, um, and I think we had something in our books too, uh, in, in, as a section in zoning on it, um, so is that something in, in zoning that zoning would need to take care of? That's a question for David, who just updated it. Yeah, it's mostly more of a building code thing. Um, it is very, <laughs> I, I guess, I just you have to separate between what looks like abandoned and what actually is abandoned. Um, most of the buildings that I would say look like they're abandoned there are owners that are working on doing things um, slowly and, you know, there's reasons that they- So they would have a build, they would actually have a building permit on file? Maybe, I mean, on ones that are being, that are in the process of being repaired, but there's buildings that people wanna tear down or that um, they're trying to figure out how to finance. Um, there is a process through the building code for the building inspector, Steve, to condemn a building. Um, my understanding is that we don't really even have the right signage to do that and purchasing them was prohibitively expensive to tell the fire department not to bother going into a building if it was on fire. So, I mean, it's not an easy process. Um, there are barriers to dealing with those buildings that have deteriorated to the point of not being financially viable to fix, and then how do they get removed? There are methods for the town to, you know, if a building that's in bad shape isn't paying taxes, there's an expedited way for the town to foreclose on it mm -hmm. in a faster time period than you normally could. 
um, if you think you can move it to a point, you know, frequently when that happens, it goes to the next property owner and then they figure out why the last property owner couldn't afford to do anything because mm -hmm. um, the market value compared to the price of removing a building that's full of lead and asbestos and other stuff, you know, it's a hard, it's a hard financial process. It, it just broke my heart when he was telling me this story because apparently he was having friends from downtown come to visit and they said to him, oh, you live in Dumpy Damby? And I, I was just like, wow, that just kind of broke my heart. Dumpy Damby. I mean, I've been here for over 30 years. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I drive 96 B all the time. I really never paid much attention to what houses are in disarray, of course, except the one next to the town hall. But yes, yeah. <laughs> to, to be to be referenced as Dumpy Damby kind of made me sad. But anyway, that's that was just my question. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, you may recall, Teresa, the, uh, I think I'm pretty sure we have a local property maintenance law too. Um, yeah. Years ago, that we've gone after uh, people for, for yeah. not maintaining. And in fact, the town has um, taken people to court and then eventually demolished um, several buildings where um, you know, the owners refused to do it or couldn't do it, including you know, the former Benjamin's one stop was torn down. The, the Grange Hall in, in West Ambia was torn down. Was a two um, Margaret Adams's house across from the Grange Hall in West Denby was torn down. All of those were were done by the town. Hmm. More recently, there was a, a, a tear down on East Miller Road somewhere. Yes, that's right. I remember that. Yeah. Um, that and yeah, the, the process was long and complicated. Yeah, and the the, the dossier on, on on many of those were like an inch thick before they came to the demolition. But, so. And well, I uh, do remember something with the, the building next door. And Gary and I actually recused ourselves. And so I never really followed up to find out what happened with it. I mean, there was some movement there for a while, right? Yep, several of them. And, uh, and even, even now, I mean, the, the, there, was, there was action taken, like the, the garage was demolished, for instance, right. it was attached. And the, you know, the bunch of stuff in the yard got removed and uh, right. you know, fallen trees have been you know, taken out of the way and stuff. But, uh, the building is obviously in sad shape, and um, you know where, the, where we go from here is not obvious. But um, okay. well, we could we could push on it, but then again, uh, you know, giving the owner time to deal with it. At least something's Thank happening you. here. Whereas the, some of those other ones you cited, it's like, well, gee, <laughs> uh, it, it's it's sad to see buildings neglected and, and deteriorate. Um, well, and this was an issue. Time. time yeah. to note that the town, uh, a week from last Friday, submitted a grant application for five hundred thousand dollars to help low-income homeowners with repairs to their homes. Now, I don't expect that that will address any of the homes that are completely empty, um, but it will help prevent other homes from falling into that state of repair. So mm -hmm. that's something that the town is doing. Um, if successful, which I expect we will be, uh, that would provide funding for 13 to 14 homes in the next two years. Sometimes some of the houses are in probate and that can take years, like the one that was um, going to be the beer hall and down the road. And that was in probate for a number of years. Anyone else for privilege of the floor? Okay, uh, moving on. Um, is, is there any correspondence, Janice? No, okay. Anybody have an announcement? No. Um, we have the clerk's report. We have the code officer's report, um, which indicates quite a bit of activity all of a sudden in the last month. <laughs> uh, um, David. Well, I just gave away the store with regard to some of the big things that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. Well, just have to get a little bit shorter. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've had, I think, relatively short um, 
planning board agendas, but a, a steady tick of planning board and DBA uh, small projects and variances ticking along. I, I won't belabor the point. Um, had a, a big push to get out the CDDG grant um, a couple weeks ago. Really glad with how that came out. If we get it, we'll have to have an RFP for who will actually manage that program, but the management is fully funded by the grant, assuming we get it. Uh, the Safe Streets for All grant that you all approved participation in um, is moving ahead. I think the city should be finalizing their um, acceptance of it uh, this week, and then it will be submitted next week. Um, so it's a busy time. Um, I, I did chat in the planning board a little bit about the uh, New York Forward grant, I'm really kind of at a um, rush forward or not um, point with that. And I, I haven't fully decided if it's even possible, but if it would be, we would be scheduling some kind of public event um, next week or early the following week. Um, and I, I'm, I'm just not sure it's, it's worth the effort in going after because we're not really in a great position for it, but there are a few projects that would be really nice to see moving forward there. Um, Working on the, the budget and um, capital projects, um, looking at the things we've called for in the comp plan and how we're gonna continue working on the next year, I think is exciting right now. Um, and then we have work ongoing on the Hamlet um, wastewater treatment study. And I, I think getting some progress with the consultants there. So I'll keep it keep it short with that. Let me know if you have any questions. Anybody got any questions? Nope. Okay. Thanks, David. Um, the consent agenda. This is Laura here. Yes, Laura is here. Laura, what did you find out with regard to the uh, suit coat voucher? Yeah, what I wanted to do, Janice. Thank you so much. You, there were a couple of bills that came through. In the through the town clerk's office, and I know Janice always tries to get them up for us uh, if they come through and they're for highway. Appreciate that. But these two particular bills, we were looking at them, and there's a couple of things on the billing that we have other questions about. So if we could just take those two, that 163 and 164 off, um, and put it and have the total claims be. So eliminate 163 and 164. We have to call the companies. We've got questions about that bill, those bills. And then the total highway would be $260,056.50. But thanks, Janice. She always tries to get them up for us if they come through there. But these mm -hmm. in particular, we got some questions. So basically it reverts to the to the um, the abstract that was in fact posted and linked to the agenda. Went back to the, yeah. 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 260 050650. Yeah. Yes. So 260,000 what was it between? $260,056.50. 50 vouchers 157 through 162. Yeah. Okay. So that then is the consent agenda. Uh, if there's no other questions do we go to well i had oh. i had uh, janice did you get mine yeah i fixed them all and responded oh, okay no. uh -huh. okay yeah. so that so that total was di different right a little different well because you were talking about the two on the highway that were wait which one are you talking about then well the general there were two there were two um uh vouchers that had taxes on them. There were two vouchers that had tax. Um, I do want to point out that one of them was from the pond manager, well, she's not the pond manager, but one of the lifeguards at the pond. And, um, you know, I think she bought that on her own and it was a dollar 20 that she paid in tax. So I don't want to cheat her out of that dollar 20 that she had to pay, um, but that's not up to me to decide. So I just wanted to point that out that that was one of the taxes that I specifically left in. Um, and I, the other one was the Verizon bill had a tax, or was it Cintas? Cintas. Yeah. yeah, it was a $5. Yes. Yeah, that was weird. That was, that was a weird one. Yeah. It is they weird. Have, they should know every, better. 
<laughs> it seems like they have one account where they keep charging us sales tax. So we'll get that one reversed. Um, so did you want to reduce the payment by that amount? Leslie, is that what you're suggesting? Um, well, yeah, if, I mean, so then it would be 51,000 instead of 56. Um, Wait, but you you're want talking to pull it? $5,000? No. No, oh, five, no, it was $5. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. $5,000 tax. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I would have noticed that one. I was just like, trying to get do the easy way here. Yeah. <laughs> um, 56 nine seventy nine thirty two. Yeah. It's $5 even. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Laura. <laughs> I'm just sitting by my couch. <laughs> Please let them walk. <laughs> So All right. This, um, oops. We got it. We got it right now. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I think okay. I can my window though. So then, is anybody willing to move the consent agenda? I'll move it. Okay. There's a second. I'll second. Okay. And we go straight to a vote. Okay. Um. <laughs> Today is the day of all days. Connors. Uh -huh. Yes. Hunter. Yes. Woodworth. Yes. And Gannon. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Um, Pat, did you uh, did, do you have a resolution that you can share with us? Yeah. Amy? Yeah. Do you want me to read it or Janice, no, I emailed it to you. Should I do you have it or should I? Read it. I'm muted. I do have it. Um, Can you screen share? Do you want me to share it? It's just um, if you can do so, it expeditiously, sure. It's yeah. It's only three lines, so I can read it if you want. Yeah. Um, it just says the town of Danby acknowledges and honors the many, many years that Amy Cusimano spent managing Jenny's Pond. Her service was a huge benefit to the many residents who have utilized Jennings Pond for swimming, neighborhood gatherings, picnics, parties, etc. The town will miss her service and presence. I didn't know if you also wanted to include that um, she was instrumental in helping make it a safe, clean, and fun environment for the community. Sure, had that. That's what was in her obituary. Oh, yeah, good. So I emailed you back. Oh, sorry, I didn't get it. <laughs> yes, no, I like that at the end. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So would that go in before they should be missed at the end? And have the advantage of screen sharing. We could be wordsmithing this together. Well, I, don't, I don't have it in a document. I just have it in an email. Oh. Yeah, the, yeah I, I just emailed it and I cut and pasted it. I didn't send a document. It was not very long. Um, it would make sense to make that the third sentence in the town will miss her service and her presence is the last sentence. Yeah. Okay, got that? I got that. And then do you have a preference for where I put that line about her being instrumental? Third third sentence. The third, okay, I wasn't sure if that's what you were saying or not. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll leave the last one as is. Got it. It actually should be the town is her service and her presence actually yeah. fits better. Okay, I put that in. Thanks. So that's a motion by Pat, right? Yep. A second. Anybody, any, any, any uh, discussion? It's the least we can say about what you did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we were wondering, uh, I was talking to Pat earlier, um, if we had any of us knew exactly how long she did it. Well, I do know when I was uh, 20 years ago or something like that, when I first moved here, I got stuck in doing stuff with the community council, volunteered, obviously. Yeah. And um she was involved at the time so i know it's been over 20 years but i did not have the exact number yeah and nobody else that i knew had the exact number when i checked okay so then you said it references many years right many many because uh yeah. Yeah. yeah 20 is many many indeed 10 is many <laughs> that's right <laughs> for many of those years she did it for nothing yeah you know it. yeah well i've been here 15 years and and so looking back, you know, I yeah. couldn't 
I didn't have any records from before that time without going to a vault or something and yeah, yeah. pull them all through to get an exact number. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other discussions before we vote? Not? Go ahead, Janice. Honors. Yes. Hunter. Yes. Woodworth. Yes. Kenyon. Yes. Um, the I thought the South Hill Trail extension was coming to a, uh, a, a approaching end point here, um, where we had the were poised to have a uh, agreement with NYSEG on a uh, uh, perpetual easement. Um, and then the meeting last week of the trail committee, um, there was talk about uh, from NYSEG about you know um, how much they would charge us for the easement. So oh, wait a minute, it's the first. The first mention of any associated expense, um, so that has kind of put us on pause. Um, but uh, in the meantime, you know, we we uh, we don't want to miss the opportunity to 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 seek um, a tourism grant that would help us to uh, scope out what's needed in order to make the first leg of the trail uh, come to pass, and in order. As part of the application process, it's helpful if we have letters of support. So um, the letter of support, which it, which um, is attached to the agenda, uh, commits us or expresses our willingness to to uh, put in a, a a a matching amount for this is an eighty thousand uh, dollar grant we're applying for, um, and we're, we're proposing a five percent match, which would be shared among the partners. Uh, our share would be about a thousand dollars. Should we should it go that way? So of course um, I want I want the board's approval before I um, send on this letter of support. I mean, so, if, if the letter just says, mentions five percent, I mean it doesn't right exactly. So doesn't so, say five percent even of what? I mean so. Well, that's why I'm mentioning I mean, it now. And if you'd like to put it in the resolution, right. we could do that. Um, well, maybe we should say something about not to not to exceed something. Um, yes, and a thousand dollars would be okay. I think because uh, that's what we're talking about. Is it's an eighty thousand uh, dollar grant that we're taking? Um, and I, I got this. The, the, I just clarified that number this afternoon. The meeting we had a meeting at three thirty because uh, I. It would it were mentioned last week, but I have neglected to write them down, and then there weren't in any correspondence. So that's eighty thousand dollars is being sought. Um, it's a five percent match shared among the partners, um, and there are um, are there five of us. It's a uh, Ithaca, Dryden, Danby, uh, Caroline. I think there's four. Um, yeah, um, and it's shared among us. It, it, does the math come out right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, each each partner shares thousand dollars. If we divide it up. So um, let me see. Hmm. I move that the board authorize me to send a letter of support um, and uh, including our, our willingness to commit to providing that $1,000 um, you know, match um, along with the other participating municipalities for the, um, in support of the application. I'll second. How much of that section is um, in Danby? Um, well, it, it is now expanded to go all the way to the county line. So if you include that that long stretch, it's almost two miles beyond. Uh, I, I lose track of which which road is where. Um, um, it, it it ends currently at uh, Medaw. Is it Medaw? Yeah. Well. Banks. No. The plan. Banks. It, it ends at bank. Well, it ends. I mean, it ends at Burns right now. Yeah, right. It ends at Burns but, right now. Yeah. Um, it goes. So it goes. Burns, Banks, Mid Iowa. Right. Um, That's the second. Right, and then and then from Mid Iowa all the way to the county line. Oh, okay. Yeah, 
but but the but the but the but the grant only covers the first two legs. The first two legs, okay. Right. So the first the two legs. It, right. No, not the middle. Only to because uh, there's a, there's another road in between. It's a German cross. Isn't it just banks? Up oh, to German banks? crossroads is counted. Okay. I know. Well, yeah. But you, you know, you got you got banks to German cross. German cross to right, right. To, okay. Uh, Burns. So so basically, um, was it Burns? I, yeah. I, I, I said people <laughs> in fact of which, which what order they're in, but um, yeah, it's that yeah. it's that 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 part which is already okay. not not in very not in too bad a shape. The next stretch there from from uh, you know between Mid Iowa and and and, and, the, and the next foot north of it, whatever it is, that's the one that's got the two bad washouts in it. Right. It's also the part that's mostly in Danby. Right. That's going to be a lot. It's going to take. It's going to be a lot more money to get that in working condition because of those bad washouts. Uh, so we know we can we can do whatever we want along the way there, and it's not going to be a through to any place until we deal with that. But uh, but those first two sections are easy, relatively easy. They're already pretty much usable as, almost as they are, because they've been they've been used sort of informally by the by the adjoining landowners for some time. And um, connecting them up would be really nice. So we're all hoping that can happen sooner rather than later. We've had a press release poised for a couple of months now. We thought we had this nailed down in June and then it took forever for the real estate department to get back to us from my say. Um, and, then, uh, and then we had this new wrinkle um, develop, which hopefully will resolve in the next, you know, month or so we'll see. So okay. any, well, any further comments or discussion? Well, it's a whole new ball game if NYSEG is going to ask for That's to pay for it, know, yeah. To pay for the easement. I mean, it's. Yeah, we may want to, you know, if, if they, well, if they do, it depends on, you know, how much are they asking? Um, can they, we talked about, well, you know, they may ask us to pay for it. Do they have any kind of uh, internal mechanism to, to, uh, to, 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 to help us pay for it? So they can do like a tax deduction or something because they're giving it to us, um, you know, um, I don't know what the what the framework is. You say it was a complete surprise to us because nothing had been mentioned about yeah. paying for it, and uh, uh, over a couple of years of negotiations about it. So, well, isn't isn't there a question with still with some of the deeds along that way? So, a nice egg shouldn't be able to get all the money. Or what's going on about that? Well, no, this is a straightforward one because unlike uh, Dryden, for instance, where when the railroad abandoned the uh, the service, the, uh, the, the, the property reverted to the ownership of the adjoining landowner. Here, the, the, uh, the right of way, even though, even though it's called a right of way, the, the railroad owned it in fee from the get go. It was a land grant. Um, so it, they, they owned it and they still do. So it doesn't revert to anybody. Lysay actually owns the property. It's a 66 foot wide strip by and large, occasionally it's wider where they have big cuts and stuff and then it broadened out in order to allow for them to, to build the railroad um, bed up. But they, um, the, the, the lines are all marked right from the get-go. You know, the properties end at the edge of this, this property that, that the railroad owned um, and that NYSEG is the successor owner of. So there's no question about you know, having to get access, I mean, having to get permission by anybody or having to acquire the rights from anybody, the rights are already in the hands of one player, and that's nice thing. It's just been all of the negotiation has been trying to work out how do we get to use it for a trail, um, you know, because they want to retain some right to in the future if if, it, if they want to, you know, use it as a utility corridor. And there's precedent for that. Um, it, it happened up well, in fact, they got the trail in Brighton, New York, uh, where there is. The, like overhead electric running down um, the the, uh, the corridor, and um, and it's a shared use, and that that can work. Um, and they're and NYSEG's okay with that too. They just want to make sure that they can go in later if they right. want to, and put in a, a you know a utility um, transmission line. Say it's highly unlikely they would ever run you know underground gas or something. And the way things are going, we're moving away from rather than toward. Uh, natural gas, but you know, they have the right away. 
And what we negotiated with them um, allowed for shared use and you know under what circumstances they would go in and how we would how we would deal with it if they wanted to do it and um, what happens if our stuff is in the way and how do we fix it so they don't mess up what we do you know all that stuff is addressed in the agreement and, and then at the at 11th hour we get this um, how much are we going to pay for it uh, <laughs> so we'll see because the, the alternative which what they didn't write in is they don't have a evidently and mark uh, whitmer's been talking to the supervisors there um, they don't have a perpetual easement they've got a a, a use agreement which is where we were before, but you, you, that's for a limited time use. It was like five years at a time, and, in, and then you re-upped, and, and it was a question, well, you know, we're, we're going to invest public money into, into creating a trail and, and, and dealing with the issues there, and we want to have some assurance that our, our public investment is going to be good for a while, and you're not going to rescind it after, you know, five years or whatever. Um, so having a perpetual easement, which is what this was, was, was um, proposed as an alternative, was very attractive. You know, where it goes on, and whatever else happens, you know, if they if they want to share the use down the road, we're okay with that. They're okay with sharing their their potential use with us. Um, but when but we're potentially hung up over that they want us to pay for that right. Meanwhile, we're going to proceed as if we can, as, as in the hope that we can iron all these things out. Um, the Gavin uh, Newsom, who's the uh, the NYSEG, um point person that we've been interfacing with, he's the area manager, um, has been very supportive of this. And so, I mean, it would be um, surprising and, and very disappointing if it didn't if we didn't uh, resolve this. They've they've, they've been uh, NYSEG's been very reasonable. In their negotiations with us about this, and generally supportive. So it's not it's not done till it's done, but um, we're 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 proceeding optimistically here and applying for the grant. Okay, we need to vote. Yep, if you're ready. Yes, okay. Connor. Yes, Hunter. Yes, Woodworth. Yes, Ganyon. Yes. Uh, the capital projects list. I'm guessing that you haven't all had a chance to look at it. It might be worth, I mean, what do you think, Leslie? Is it worth sharing? Um, our, our, the, the committee uh, reviewed what you, um, you see, not everybody was part of that process last year where we created the wish list. Right. Um, Catherine and Pat were not on the board at the time. Um, FYI, we did that a year ago, um, and the, there was a step in the direction of of, of of at least identifying where we would have um, products that we where, where we would like to see money put in the future. And um, it was it, it, for the last year, it's resided as something more than a wish list. And what 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 I'm hoping we can do this year is is to um, refine it, um, add to it if necessary. And um, and start to get some numbers associated with this and some prioritization, so we have some so we can do a capital planning, um, and plug it into a multi-year financial plan, so we can see what the impact would be on the budget if we started um, actually planning to do these things and what you know how much money we're willing to commit on an annual basis to do it. So where we are at this point is simply having reviewed the list, um, had some discussion and, and added to it, but there's there's room for uh, Feedback from the, from other board members on whether we are, you know, things are on there that you don't think ought to be, and where there's things missing that you think we really ought to be thinking about doing something that that we haven't that we haven't included. And Gary, the court definitely ought to be part of this process in terms of um, capital planning, particularly, um, you know, the the Handicap accessibility component is part of our capital planning, and is a joint concern of both, you know, town. Yeah, I noticed all that. folks and um, in the court, and also with the cameras. Yeah, well, we kind of did that one, but um, 
although there's still some uh, thought about having to adjust a little bit. Having what? Having to adjust. Uh, did that get resolved? I mean, uh, Janice raised, uh, I think it was Janice, raised the point uh, about the uh, being able to uh, choose which camera uh, view you can have magnified on, on, on your screen. Um, she doesn't have that control. No, what, what Janice and Steve have is a mirror image of what we have. Right. So there's there's no there's nothing we can do about that. No, there is something we can do. Put in your own, your own cameras. <laughs> no, the yeah. when I asked the guys when they were there, they said, "Oh, we just need to run another cable." So it would be another USB and another cable to to be able to have the ability to switch. And I asked them to put together a quote on it and to send it. So I don't know if they were going to send it to you or who they were going to send it to. Well, but if it's going to affect our, the, our view of the cameras, no, we it's have not the control. Affect, it wasn't, it's not going to affect you. That's why if they can put in another cable that will allow us to be able to switch our view without affecting your view, then each of us has the ability to see the areas that we're affected most by. Well, the person I Gary, spoke Gary, with, it was just the size of the view, not the actual view. Well, I know the size. We, we all we all see six images at once. Right. The right. same six images. Right. Yeah. Right. And if I, thought the cameras what, can see. I thought that's what Janice and Steve wanted. Yes. And they got what they wanted. Now they want the control of what they see. Because it's less helpful for us to be able to easily spot who's coming into the court entrance because the court entrance is always locked, as opposed to being able to see who's coming in the front door, which is more relevant to when people come in and out. There's also a blind spot when people come in the front door, there's no camera that actually sees where people are going when they come into the foyer. So you could have somebody come in and go into the bathroom or go into the kitchen and we have no idea what they're doing. So if we are looking at the camera, first of all, we have to figure out which little tiny screen to look at to see, are they going into our hallway or are they gonna go into the library? And then we sit and wait for a few minutes. And when we see movement, then we can say, oh, they went to the library or, after five minutes, where might they have gone? Who knows? We can't see because we can't see into the foyer where there's a kitchen and two bathrooms and a back exit. <laughs> so well, I don't think this has ever come up before anybody. I mean, as far as we've got more security now than we've ever had. Yeah. I, I just don't understand where you're going with all this. Where we're well, going to make well, sure that every employee that's in town hall is equally safe and a and has the ability <laughs> to monitor their surroundings the way the court does. We all work together. We're all on the same well, team here. You're monitoring the same thing we are. I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> but you only have people coming in and out of your court entrance door. You're here Mondays and Tuesdays from 8 to 11. And every other time, your court entrance door is locked. Then nobody's coming from, in. From, from 9 to 6 p.m., the front foyer doors are open and we can't see, we can see maybe the back of somebody who's coming up the ramp because yes, we did move that camera that hits the ramp and I get a really nice view of the charging station. But once they enter the door, I can't see their face. I can't see which way they're going until they pop it up in my window or they pop up in the library. So, you know, if we're talking about workplace violence and threat assessments, then we don't have the ability to assess if there is a threat <clears throat> against us because someone can come in like extreme worst case scenario, right? I realize that we're not in New York City, for example, but worst case scenario, someone can come in, be in the foyer, load their gun up, and then come over to wherever we're sitting. Right, and if the if the if the point of this whole process is to yeah. enable those of us who are working in this building to be able to protect ourselves and know if somebody's going to do that, then it's not serving that function. In yeah. the hundred years that Danby's been a town, 
Has there ever? I don't been a care how system? many years Gambia has been a safe. Yeah, no. I think there's one person anymore. worrying about. We're people. talking about threat assessment and right. violence against the people right. who are in this building <laughs> five days a week, five days a week from morning till night after it gets dark when there's only one person who's here by themselves. Okay. I don't care how safe Danby is. This is a threat assessment issue, and this is threat assessment. Sorry, Gary. Um, jo well, and uh, that's why we. Wait Joel, a minute. Joel, do we yes. have a threat assessment team? Yes, yes we do. I mean, I mean, let's let's, you know, there, you know, let's uh, look into what different issues people have. Um, well, you know, what's disappointing here is that. You know, the, the team looked at the, the whole right. camera issue, right. and uh, and and this alternative was identified as as adequately addressing the need. Right, right. And we went this way, um, and having gone this way, we have you know we're, we're we're we have some costs here associated with having done this. Right. And we have some limited ability to adjust because I think we're maxed out on the number of cameras. So it's not oh, yeah. well, we need to add a camera in order to cover the hall. Um, I don't know how the hell we would do that. You know, we'd have to redeploy a camera from a from that's been covering um, one location to covering another location or something. And maybe we could look at doing that, but but we're constrained by the number of cameras that that are possible with, with this right. approach. So there's two issues here. One was one, one is what are the cameras covering, which um, what really should have been adequately addressed before the system decision was made how to go. And then the other one was. Well, gee, you know, there's only one image out of six that's 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 big, and it's controlled by the court, and we don't have the ability to 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 make our big image, you know, the one that's most relevant to us, and that, having been looked into it, uh, can be can be fixed by adding a cable. That's something that can be done, and that, that makes it more functional for the clerk and for the and for the for the uh, code, without making it any less functional for the court. So and there's no reason why we can't do that. So that's that's part of our capital planning. This other part, though, is kind of disappointing, and and it's no, and there might not be a good fix for it. Um, maybe we could do something simple. I don't know, um, but it's it, it's something to look into. Something the threat team could look into. Catherine. Well, I'm <clears throat> I'm on the threat assessment team, and so is Laura, and we're here. And there is we we obviously are going to have to discuss this because I know yep. what Janice is talking about. Um, and I and I feel very strongly that that is an issue. And I, you know, when we changed it, we tried. What we tried to do was was to be cost effective, and it's not it's not adequate. So we do have to at least revisit what might be able to be done. So our yeah. our discussion here will just allow us to go forward and re re reinvestigate. Yeah, I would just like to follow up on that, Catherine, because um, you know our our desire to be cost effective came from Gary, who didn't want to spend taxpayer money on making sure that every single person who is employed and working in this building felt safe and secure, and that we had adequate security systems that we, the rest of us who are in this building five days a week and not just two, could have access to the video cameras that were already installed for the court. So this was done because Gary finally said, Oh yeah, we can we can switch a camera and we can get get you video access. So yes, this has been cost effective, and it, it was because of Gary. Thank you, Gary, for enabling this. But it doesn't go quite far enough. Yes, it's a definitely a step up from where we've been, and yes, we appreciate it. But no, it doesn't meet the needs of the threat assessment team and the report's recommendations right. that was submitted last year and that the board approved. Right. Well, I, I can I just say. I, I think that um, when a decision is being made, that if the court, I, I mean, I, I only got information through Gary as to what was happening. Um, and, and so now I feel like I need to put in my two cents. I mean, my concern about other offices having access to the court cameras is the fact that you would be able to see what's going on in our office after hours. Now, if I left some private information on my desk, I'm not saying, I don't believe that anyone would zoom in to see what's on my desk, but we do need to be careful about 
who can see or have access to what is in our chambers. Do you understand what I'm saying? I completely understand what you're saying. And A, your office isn't even showing up on here anymore. It was in the beginning. Oh. B, okay. it's so stinking small and there is no way in hell that I can see what is sitting on your desk, let alone <laughs> read it. So I, 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 I understand your point about confidentiality and needing to maintain a sense of you know, procedure, um, but that is not an issue with us having access to the okay. campus. And that's what I'm, I don't believe it would ever, I'm just saying, you understand. Yeah, so I, get, I get what you're saying completely. Right. But um, I, yeah. I think it would be good if the team got together and, and sort of came up with a proposal. I mean, there are, I, don't, I don't know all the ins and outs. I mean, I, I know that the last meeting, there was no talk about, you know, needing another camera. It was talk of needing to see pictures bigger instead of smaller. Um, so things are changing every meeting. But, you know, maybe the threat assessment team could you know, maybe mirrors. There's been talk about putting mirrors up. Yes, that's right. Um, you know, so maybe there's some way to be able to see that spot um, between the kitchen and the door and the bathroom. Um, you know, that, you know, so anyway, I, I think that we should wait and hear what the threat mm -hmm. assessment team comes up with. And, yeah. and the, re the repositioning of the cameras came from the threat right. assessment team. Right. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Right. So we, we, we honored what they wanted. Not okay. exactly. Yes, I really, did. Can we stop? Can we stop this and let the yes. threat assessment team no, go yes. after it? Because clearly there is a problem, and and having this discussion here will not solve it. We need to have the threat assessment team needs to get back together, and we do need to address the security. That's been one of my primary reasons for being involved, also, and I I see exactly the point. Um, I mean, for that matter. We technically could see everything in the third clerk's office, but that's still, you know, that the clerk's office is still asking for more. So, you know, technically we've just seen in Congress that the yeah. confidential things shouldn't be left out. So I don't want to hear that for an argument. Sorry. But we definitely need to assess the problem. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Okay. And I think I think if you're right, there's no point in we're not we're not right. gonna solve the problem by talking about it here. That's right. But I do want to say, as someone who is on the threat assessment team, that this was in the report that was submitted that cameras needed to be added, not moved from what the court had, because at the time of the report, the court was not willing to work with the rest of the building to make sure that all occupants of the building felt safe and secure. So, you know, we could piddle over this all night long, like Catherine was saying, but I, I don't want to hear that this is a new thing. We, I'm not bringing up right. anything new. And <laughs> you're right. Yeah, we could argue about that too. So let's mm -hmm. move on. <laughs> well, she likes to hear what she likes to hear. So this, this is a bit of a detour from the from the focus here, which was the the, the, right. uh, the wish list, um, which is almost allegedly small. Janice, can can you can you make it bigger? How's that? Uh, yeah. Good. More? Do you want more? No, that's good. That's all right. Um, and now, if you scroll down, we can probably get the whole list on, can't we? Yeah, most of it. There we yeah. go. Yeah. Um, the water district thing's already been dealt with. So here's what's what left. Um, and I know some of this is town hall and some is not. Um, I'm not sure why we have that heading, but it, this is uh, probably take it off. It'd probably be more helpful, but a lot of them are um, town hall related. Well, I think leave the heading and then we can move. We could have a, a we could have another, a sub subset other, other right. heading. <laughs> yeah, and right. Move the other stuff out. Yeah, right. So you know we have we still haven't got a game plan, and and this is something we have to do too how to um, do the security upgrades to the clerk's office and the um, code office without uh, messing up other things. There was one proposal to, to move the transaction window to the 
to the and where the double doors are going into the hall from the from the foyer. Um, but that would create problems with the court. Um, with with their 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 access to the to the to the bath bathrooms is that way. Um, and not only that, it's the only handicap access to the court is, is down that hall from the main entrance. So we haven't yet resolved this completely, but um, that discussion needs to happen in order to put a plan together that we can embrace. That in addition to the space um, requirements, which we're talking about, talked about a little bit this morning, um, how much storage space we need and where we're going to generate it, whether it needs to be on one place or could be more than one place. Or do you want it? Um, Just and then that relates in part to how many more things that we're going to generate that need to be to filed away in, in paper as opposed to in electronic form. So, um, so there's some, so there's, there's some, I wouldn't call them imponderables, they're ponderables. There are, there are things we have to think about in order to put together a capital project plan that uh, takes those things into account and then and then has a as a, a, a way of dealing them that we can that we can say okay this will work and now we'll do this phase this in phase one and this in phase two and so forth you know, over a certain period of time um the, i i i uh, corresponded recently with with david i think it's it david mcdermott the the uh, threat team chair David. yeah um, about this and said, you know, we, we need to we need to get this. I mean, he was raising a question, you know, the, the clerk's windows and the transaction window, and said, well, we need to put it in the context of the other things that need to happen in terms of accessibility, accessible access to the building, um, as well as um, addressing that other issue because um, they all interface. Um, and um, now that when you have Steve back. Um, congratulations, Steve. He's no longer also the oh. officer for the town of Caroline. <laughs> or um, Caroline. <laughs> well, they have a new guy, so I'm hoping it'll, it'll work out for them. And Steve's providing some support to him, but but he'll have more time, and, and we can now um, have his his input, which was was uh, um, wanting on, on on addressing these ish planning issues for the town hall. So we'll work on that. So, so, so several of these items are related to that, interconnected, um, and then there are things that are not connected to that 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 are also on the list, yeah. like you know codifying our laws, um, and then the stuff at the end, you know the trails and um, the whole question of how much we want to invest in the broadband, and we'll probably let's see if I got it on here. I don't have it yeah. on here, so I'll just mention is it, well, where broadband is on there. It's mm -hmm. on the list. I'm just not in business to talk about tonight. You recall at the last meeting, we, uh, uh, I, I, I proposed creating a local committee with, with Jeff Lang and um, Zach Lind. Um, and the board said, we'll have them talk to each other and get back to us with, the, with the, a yeah. game plan for how, how they would proceed. Um, and I've spoken to, uh, 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 I spoke to Jeff at some length. Um, the, where we are in the scheme of things is that he and, and uh, the two of them have yet to talk to each other. Okay. Um, and, and since that meeting, we've also had the additional development that the, the Council of Governments, um, as a follow up to the forum we had with the uh, engineers from Hunt, um, have uh, said, well, what are next steps for, for TCOG? And the next step was to create a committee to look at what the next steps are. Um, on that committee is me and Mark so far. Um, so we've got we've got uh, the communication from the county, and I think that was shared with the board, wasn't it? Um, where we the, with, from Nick Hemholt um, saying that uh, the county is trying to do countywide what we and Danby are already done, which is to 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 do a, basically a uh, I mean, called a windshield survey. To determine where the where the wired connections already are countywide, we already have it for Danby, and evidently we have it for Lansing as well. Yeah. But we don't have it for the rest of the county, um, although it doesn't not, not going to matter in Dryden because they're going to run they're going to run fiber to the whole town anyway. But um, but the county wants that same information countywide so that we have a better um, they have I guess I'd say a better uh, handle on 
how many people actually are not connected. Uh, and then they want to come up with a game plan for how to connect them. The, the, um, the county has so acted, I think, consistently in, in that they, they backed away from the, from the, from the um, request, I would call it a request, that many of, of the surrounding um, smaller towns at least had, had made uh, a couple of years ago, back before Anna Kellis took office. She was, she was just doing a lot of effort on this when she was on the legislature, but she's not anymore. Um, that recommended and was moving in the direction of trying to get, see if we, what the, what, whether it would be feasible to do a countywide um, fiber network. And, um, and Katie Borgella, the current planning director for the county, was not willing to embrace that possibility at the time. And as far as I know, that's still the, basically her stance is that we don't want to be uh, in the middle of trying to orchestrate countywide fiber network. Um, so I think their thrust is still how do we maybe collaborate? What's the county's role in facilitating getting those people who are not hooked up to something hooked up to something? Um, and the first step of that is identifying who's not hooked up. And then the second step is, you know, who can, how do we work with the existing providers to extend service to those who need it? Um, in, in TCOG, the, 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 we're, we're, we're focused more on, can we move in the direction of uh, a, a community fiber network? Um, and who would, be, who would be the willing players? And, uh, and are there ways to extend service to those who aren't getting it that, that are other than simply subsidizing the line extensions by private carriers who then own it at, at our ex expense for having put it there? So we'll look at that. Um, but um, how that all comes together so we don't duplicate effort is something that's gonna be worked on in the next month or two and um, and how our local committee interfaces with the TCOG committee and how both of them interface with the county committee um, that all of whom are dealing with broadband in one way or another um, is something that will have to work out but the the uh, the, the relevant uh, contribution to the conversation at this point is that that Zach and Jeff have yet to have that conversation to, um, in order to come back to the board with a, here's where we are and here, how we think we can make this uh, a fruitful collaboration that would contribute to resolving the problems for folks. So hopefully by the next meeting, they'll report back. Um, and, um, and hopefully by the next meeting, you know, Mark and I will um, have some conversations about where and how the TCOG committee will interface with that effort and the county's effort. That too is a bit of a diversion, but um, just to give you a little context there, particularly since it wasn't on the agenda for the rest of the meeting. Um, also on, on the question of trails, um, the, the bottom of stream trail pilot project is on this list, um, but um, I'm not sure there's any real prospect there. Um, what there is a prospect for is Brad Roush is interested in the whole trail issue and um, has agreed to, to uh, spearhead an effort to take a look at the trails. Um, his, his thought was a good place to start would be to put together a, a local map of where the trails are currently. Um, the county has a pretty good map as a starting place, but it doesn't have the, there, there are a lot of trails that aren't on it. For instance, the internal trails in the, in the uh, Lindsay Parsons diverse, uh, Biodiversity Preserve aren't on it. The internal trails on the in the Danby Community Park are not on it. Um, I'm not sure the connecting trail between uh, Jennings Pond and, and the Finger Lakes Trail is on it. So I mean, there are there are trails that aren't there, um, and there may be some private trails that people might be willing to put on too. Um, so it's a starting place, and and Brad's willing to work on that, but it's not a, really a capital project. Sh Leslie shaking her head. So we've got a trails committee going and we haven't talked about what it does or who we need to 
talk about that. Maybe we could add that to the next month's meeting. Well, it's not really a committee. It's just one guy at this point. Well, yeah. I, I think I think for the record here, one of the one of the one of the few things that I as as a town supervisor can do is create committees and mm -hmm. appoint their chair. I mean, I have that authority without the board saying, you know, you, know, you can do this. Well, um, I'm sure I, you want our support. Well, yeah, I do. Um, um, no. But but I don't necessarily, you know, if somebody has an interest and willing to do something, um, I don't necessarily feel compelled to come to the board and say, you know, huh. what do you think about this? Um, I, I'm telling you about it now. I mean, and this is this is uh, it's, it's basically an FYI. Um, if I I um, I certainly hope and expect that you would support it because it, it's related to what we what we what we said we wanted to do, um, and it and it's relevant to this particular item on the on the, on the capital projects list because um, it's it, it may be in lieu of because there wasn't the willing there's not the interest in pursuing that at the moment. That was kind of contingent upon uh, on Catherine. Um, you know, following through on it, and she doesn't have the bandwidth to, to take it on. I, hope um, I, I, I resent that phrase. Sorry, Joel. That that implies something that's not so and having that not having the bandwidth. The bottom line is that there are a lot of things going on and Leslie's right. We, we, can, we have things that there are so many things that we want to do. Exactly. It would be nice if we were able to maybe coordinate, but you've been talking for quite a bit jumping around in this list and by now you know, yes, there, it would be nice if we could do that. And I'm glad that Brad wants to look at it. Um, but there there were grants involved at the time and we didn't have the, we weren't able to do anything about it at that time. So, uh, and then there was an issue about the, um, the solar farm in the way. So, you know, there's more to this than just saying Catherine didn't have the bandwidth, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I perhaps didn't state it very well. Um, no, you didn't. And I and I think we're talking a lot about a lot of this. And right now, it would be really better if this whole list were organized and separated out. It's right now, it's a big jumble of a whole bunch of lines. So it really needs to be separated out and made so that there are categories. I mean, yeah, I agree. Leslie and that's, that's part of our that, that's that's part sort of the next step in the process. Yeah. All it is right now is just it's almost a I wouldn't call it stream of consciousness, but the the well, the, yeah. the list started with the town hall stuff, and then it was augmented by um, what we brought added to it at, at at last year, and it wasn't in any kind of it's not it's not in any kind of order, um, and it and it it's just let's get our thoughts down on paper. You know what do we think are things that we might want to that that we think are worthy goals. You know that that are going to take money to implement, um, and it's it's not. Um, it has it needs organization, as you say, and it needs price tags associated with it, and it needs prioritization. Um, once we have some idea of you know what are the most important things to do and what kind of order we want to pursue them. We, if we want to, we could add you know add things that came out of the comp plan if if they're relevant. So right, and we went through that this morning, so there yeah. wasn't a whole lot there that that suggests itself. But we're meeting again on Thursday, um, and if uh, if that inspired, um, you know, additions, then then that would be a good good time in the, to to add them to this list. Uh, my own the only point in bringing this to the board tonight is just to say, does anything jump out at you as being conspicuously absent here that that we ought to add um, to the list, um, or alternatively that it's conspicuously not something you want to see happen mm -hmm. and, and that maybe doesn't belong on the list. Right. Cool. And I don't know, Joel, if you want this to be the case, but um, it is accessible to everybody, and anybody can add or comment. Sure, on. sure. And if public have, if public, uh, anybody who sees this by virtue of it being public information wants oh, yeah. to make suggestions, um, that would be okay too. Um, yeah. Than, uh, although I. <laughs> I'm, and let me clarify, um, everybody in town board has access to it and can add or comment. Um, I, I don't, I mean, I could make it accessible to the public to, to comment on, or we could have a, something else if they wanted to submit suggestions or recommendations. Um, but just in, in 
prep for Thursday's meeting when you guys were talking about uh, adding things or highlighting things. Everybody has access to it and can do it. It's in the it's in the town of Danby folder under budgets, and it's that's it. It's just town of Danby budgets. It's a interesting ah. place for it to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have looked there. Okay. Right. Well, there's no cat. There's no category that that, that it would uh, unless we had to create a new one. It says you know capital project or something. We could if you want me to create a new folder. Or it if might make, it might make sense because you know budget is not someplace one would think to look. I don't think. Yeah. I, I do think that there is an issue that Ter Teresa brought up that I I somebody tells me every time I see this one particular person they say the same thing to me about houses and they and everybody mentions different ones. So I know that that's not something the town can do totally, uh -huh. but we, we could do, we do need to address the situation. We can't just say, well, we don't know because um, it, I know I have to say that there probably is a way to do even an encouraging notice that says the, the town, the town's reputation yeah. depends a lot on how we keep our own houses and Let's look to doing, you know, I'm not, I'm just making this up right now, but I think that should be on the list somehow. I think you're right. I mean, that's a, that's, that's a very good point. The, uh, and, I, and I don't want to hear that word beautification. That's not it. <laughs> yeah. you're, you, are, you are talking property maintenance. <laughs> right. right. And, it's, and, it's, and it's partly it's a health and safety thing too, but um, we have, and I think we just you know, need to review, but if we're going to, if we're going to um, try to address um, I guess you call it derelict buildings. Um, you know, where when we have done so in the past, it's been it's been a significant expense for the town. So, so if, we, if we're going to go that way, we need to budget for it. So that probably a capital projects list is is a good place for it to be. Um, well, ab, maybe even ab, just a absent another and absent another one, and we can suppose we could say, create a reserve um, specifically geared at uh, addressing you know enforcement of uh, maybe even problems. just a, a pro, some kind of a program joel that addresses you know talks about you know that uh, works through you know talking with the, the landowners and i mean i know that the the ones that that were torn down either by the town or the owners that i was aware of um we were able to influence that even though it took uh, one case i think it was a year um they were safety issues, uh, you know, people were partying in the building and um, there was maybe, you know, rodents or, you know, there were safety issues. Um, but, but, you know, maybe we need a, you know, a little side pocket for Steve <laughs> to help figure yeah. out how to approach people. Sometimes, you know, maybe it would just be a conversation with somebody. Um, but do you need help? What's the problem? You know, mm -hmm. um, uh, and we need a game plan for doing that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's going it, to it's going to require um, both, the, and, and the game plan is going to require some funding. You know, we have to be able, you know, to to say where are we going with this. You know, if if if, if people aren't able to or won't, um, do we push? Do we do we push the issue? Which we did in the past. I mean, Margaret Adams' house was torn down, and and the Grange Hall was torn down. And Benjamin and right. Wentzop were toned down all because they wouldn't do it. Right. They wouldn't well, maybe fix we it. could they have would... a conversation with Steve about what what first steps could be that maybe didn't cost anything. Mm -hmm. Well, there there is another option, and that's called incentive. When you drive through, for <laughs> instance, as I've been driving through West Slaterville, I yeah. see I see active work going on, and it's a, and it makes other people think, well, wait a minute, that house is looking nice. Maybe I should do something, maybe blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so yeah. there's another way of looking at it, um, not just going after people and, um, you know, so right. and uh, as, as I agree David, with Right, as David mentioned, you know, have um, this this rehab grant, if we can get it, well, should help exactly in the way you're talking about, because you would be putting, we'll be putting money into fixing up houses for people who have a hard time. Um, and, ha and, and can't manage to do it themselves. Right. That that's I think a I think we would find that to be a different matter than most of the vacant houses uh, that have been vacant. Some of them for twenty years, over twenty years. Um, I think that's a different situation. I agree. Uh, I so, agree. 
I think we should look into what the different what what the different issues are for people. Um, yeah. You know, so and. This okay. sounds like it, it sounded to me like a different Dave's initiative though than, than the, the capital projects um, was intended to address, but um, but it will also require funding. And where do we plug that into a budget and for a financial plan? David had his hand up. Yeah. I, I don't want to get off, off topic too much, but I was just going to note that we are, I am seeing the impact of the loosening of the zoning in the hamlet on people being able to make projects work because if you can add units it can make sense to tear something down um so th that's a component of it as well but it, it takes it takes a little time um if if we can make it more possible with you know wastewater infrastructure that makes it even more possible to do a project that pencils financially without other government subsidy without the town having to pay for something to happen mm -hmm. just makes sense as a landowner. Mm. Good. Okay, so Joel, you wanted people to look at the list and either see if there's things that need to be added or things they'd like to see removed. Right. Um, and you can say we're we we the committee are meeting on Thursday. Um, if you can get suggestions to us between then and now, that would be great. Thursday. Um, yeah, Thursday. What, tomorrow? As in, no, tomorrow, two days tomorrow's, from, tomorrow's two Wednesday. Days. Tomorrow's yeah. Wednesday, two yeah. days from now. Yes. Uh, What's the name uh, of this committee? The Capital Projects Committee. It started out as the ARPA group. It's just a little bit broader than ARPA. Uh, you know, what to do with that money? Um, it's also, it's, it's, it's that, that money is part of a bigger picture of, you know, where, 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 do, where do we put our capital? Um, in, uh, in in a big picture planning perspective. What time will that meeting be, Joel? 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. Gotcha. Have that on your calendar because you're on. <laughs> I know, I got it. <laughs> got it now. Yeah. The committee, to remind you, is uh, uh, Janice and Leslie and Laura and David and me. Um, and I, I, it's a very good point about the um, dealing with these uh, derelict buildings. Uh, the, the whole, and, and on a broader level, there's the whole question of code enforcement too, which has been sort of taking a back seat um, while Steve was on loan um, because he had plenty on his plate just keeping uh, up with the building permits and the associated um, inspections. Yeah. Um, and there are a bunch of, there are several things that sort of got set aside as being, well, we know when Steve has the time, yeah. uh, we could start looking at these other things. And, um, Let's fill early, up his time. Right. And early on in the process, uh, you know, there were, there were a couple of webinars I went to on you know how we can uh, uh, the how these it, issues the issues of derelict buildings can be addressed um, both cost effectively in terms of administration and also in terms of process that that makes it that that makes it uh, possible to intervene sooner rather than later as a building deteriorates rather than wait till it's a tear down. You know, if you can do something that sort of force, forces the issue and gets it dealt with, um, it's to the benefit of the community um, and um, and cost effective really in the end. But we haven't had the time or resources to pursue that. But it's something we ought to be looking at going forward. Certainly, there have been people who have complained to me about our lack of enforcement about. You know that those times that thing we have yeah. laws in the books. Why aren't we enforcing it? Well, it's been an issue. Okay, um, we were going to um, uh, you know the next line review of options adding constraints for cannabis sales and consumption sites. Um, David, you're a lead in that one. Yes, I am. Um. I think we talked about this a little bit last time. Right. Uh, 
I put together a little bit of slides and I, I'm afraid I wasn't sure it, exactly <laughs> where we, what we had talked about doing today. And I meant to go back and look at that and see, and I did not, but I put together something to talk through quickly and we can think about it a little more. Um, so this is stolen from someone else's presentation and then augmented um, for our use. Um, but wanted to start with reminder of the kinds of businesses that we um, can see. Uh, agriculture actually growing and harvesting, um, industrial uses, um, processing, oil extraction, manufacturing of food products like gummies or cookies or anything like that, mm -hmm. uh, retail sales, and then um, entertainment or on-site consumption, um, which we, we don't re really have a process for yet. So I'm really looking at those second two, the commercial and the on-site consumption, the mm -hmm. options that the state has said would be reasonable are limitations on operating hours. Um, we should be consistent in the way we approach this with other similar uses. So if this mm -hmm. was the only thing that there were limitations for, it would make the regulation vulnerable to challenge. Um, but if we had other uses that we applied similar restrictions to for similar reasons, that would make sense, such as a bar, for example, or a liquor store, we treated that the same, that would make sense. Mm -hmm. uh, performance requirements, so requiring air filtration, um, that you not have smells detectable at property lines, um, not be creating unreasonable sound, et cetera. Um, and I would actually put in with that farther down below is restrictions on signage and vis visibility and how a product looks or how a building or the sales, how it looks from the outside. Um, then there's buffer requirements. Um, so lots of towns have buffer requirements from a residence, church, school, park. Um, these in other places I've seen range from 200 to 1,000 feet, depending on the municipality and the thing they're buffering from. Um, I wanted to make sure that everyone knows that already built into state law are 500 feet from school grounds and 200 feet from houses of worship. Mm -hmm. for this um, so that's not, that's something that's already part of state law. But only for dispensaries, is that right? Yes. Not consumption sites. There really aren't, um, they haven't fleshed that out yet. So mm -hmm. I'd be surprised if they don't end up doing similar, but as far mm -hmm. as I know, it currently applies to dispensaries. Mm -hmm. um, another thing municipalities in other places have done is buffers from other marijuana uses, so they're trying to spread them out. We talked a little bit about the pluses and minuses of that mm -hmm. last time, whether you would want multiple similar uses next door um, or whether you want to spread them all around. So I've seen um, similar, you know, a flat number, you know, DMVs shall have no more than five or they cannot have more than two on any thousand foot section of road or each one has to be at least a mile from another one, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, restrictions on signage and visibility, that is kind of a performance thing, um, but this use you know, has a bad reputation for tacky signage. We have signage regulations already. Um, something that a lot of places have done that I uh, think has not worked very well is require you to not be able to see into the building. Um, which I think is kind of the opposite of what oh, you want. want to do that. <laughs> want, you want visit, um, visibility. Well, the reason that some municipalities say that they want not to have visibility into the store is they're worried about that encouraging theft. Oh. Um, like with a jewelry store, frequently they, mm -hmm. they want when it's closed to not be able to see inside. So you don't know if there's stuff out. I mean, this is a business model that is, they experience a high rate of theft and most like 90 or more percentage of theft is actually from employees. Um, so they have a lot mm -hmm. of strict standards within the industry trying to deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, 
but also they wouldn't be leaving things out because it is a, a stealable commodity, especially in the beginning of this process. Um, and then the, the last thing is um, limiting, and this is beyond just this use, but towns can limit where smoking marijuana or using marijuana is allowed on public property. You can't limit people's ability to smoke at their house. Um, but uh, currently by state law, smoking of marijuana is banned or vaping of marijuana is banned anywhere that tobacco is banned, but municipalities are allowed to adjust that. So you could prohibit smoking tobacco, but allow smoking of marijuana in locations if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard of anyone doing that, but it is specifically called out as something that you can do. Um, so some guidance from attorneys on this um, is that it's, it's safe in regulations for the municipality to regulate an entire category of use generally. Um, what is dangerous for a municipality is treating cannabis differently than other similar uses, which I, I think I'm banging. Mm -hmm. uh, home here, you have to be prepared to articulate a rational basis of why doing so addresses some legitimate public health and safety or welfare concern. Um, what is different about it? For mm -hmm. example, what would be different about a um, CBD retail store from a liquor store? And you have to be consistent with the comprehensive plan in um, what regulations are whenever you adopt them. Um, and it is a good reminder, we have not updated our comprehensive plan recently, and it'd be a good thing to think about in the next few years. Yep, we need to get into that too. Um, so what should a town do with a site plan? Process it like any other site plan applications. You have all the same questions. You know, how does circulation on the site work? How does it affect um, bordering properties? Um, mm -hmm. Is there adequate circulation and parking traffic? Is it gonna create, does it meet our commercial design guidelines? Um, does it, the style of the building fit um, the nature of the area that it's incorporated in? Does it do all the other things that the design guidelines require like having windows on the front and a door on the front and the parking to the side or behind? Um, so basically treating it making sure that we're treating it the same as other things and not um, creating a higher bar arbitrarily. Um, and then is it a permitted use? Look at the zoning district. If it's not an allowed use, then a use variance would be required there. Um, use variances are very difficult. Um, we talked about wanting to make a specific use for this uh, was my impression from the last meeting is that we did want to have um, these defined as uh, uses different than just retail, for example. Um, so things that we can ask for from an applicant, um, a copy of their state license application, um, the, their partner's agreements, um, the different kinds of licenses. Uh, they have to give us notice at least 30 days before they apply for these and we can weigh in on those applications at the state level um, with any concerns that the town has about a particular location. Um, so they suggested that we get a description and map of each location for industrial hemp, um, what they're gonna do to the site, uh, plan and summary of the issues that the applicant is going to study with their application, their marketing plan, um, for, for growing a seed acquisition plan. Um, and this is on top of the regular kind of site plan stuff. So I got some examples of different towns, um, and they range from the town of Hempstead, where they opted out like we did not, and they completely banned um, the sale and use, um, in this case, of uh, uh, marijuana products in any um, public town-owned land. So parks, park districts, marinas, beaches, outdoor and indoor um, town locations. Mm -hmm. Newcastle 
um, they have a specific district that they allow uh, marijuana retail and marijuana vape shops, and they mostly focus on buffering requirements. So um, not within 500 feet of any park, playground, library, or religious institution, um, not within 2,000 feet of another similar business, um, and then prohibited in all residence districts, and no more than one vape shop or marijuana store on any lot or within a thousand feet of any other vapor marijuana retail store. Um, in town of Amityville, uh, they sent it only to their industrial districts hmm. Hmm. Um, and they treated it the same as uh, tobacco smoke shops, mm -hmm. vape shops, e-liquids, um, hookah, water pipe, basically any smoking related thing they considered under the same rules. Um, a requirement that you have to have the required state licenses. Again, obviously you have to do that anyway, but it creates a, another check in the process. Mm -hmm. And then um, they have additional buffers. Um, so in addition to needing to be in the industrial zone, they also have to be not within 300 feet of any residential parcel um, or within half a mile of any other similar use and not within 500 feet of a school, church, playground or playing field. Yeah. Um, so some other slides there, you know, can we, can you ban industrial hemp or CDB uses completely? Um, they have protections in um, ag zones and we can't preempt the state in terms of state licensing. So we cannot say you can't, that someone can't sell marijuana products in a zone where they're allowed. We can decide what zones they are allowed, um, but the standard is that you can't make those restrictions so strong that it becomes impractical for someone who's able to get a license from the state to operate the business in the county. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a little bit more about this. And we hadn't talked uh, previously about uh, anything other than consumption and and um, distribution. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that we really need to. Um, so, so the question really before us is: Do we want to re to to add additional restrictions beyond what is already in our zoning for similar uses? And it was my. My takeaway from our last conversation was that the board was interested in specifically defining this use um, to have restrictions along the lines of, um, for example, an on-site consumption would be required to have uh, air filters that would protect neighboring properties from the smell so that you, you wouldn't be vent venting outdoors unfiltered marijuana smoke, for example. Um, yep, I think the, so, the, so we definitely the smell was about, definitely an issue that was raised. Yeah, yeah, we definitely talked about that. Um, mm -hmm. The other things that could be different, um, you know, hours of operation. Um, if we, I, I would suggest that if the town wants to go that way, that we think about any other businesses that should similarly have a restriction on hours. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to apply the same rule to a tavern um, as you would an on-site consumption of marijuana, I think that would make sense if you were going to say, you know, they have to close at nine o'clock um, because you don't, you know, want people coming and going or noise. It would make sense. You, sh which you shouldn't treat one differently than the other. I don't know that you do want to do that if you want to encourage them to be successful, I would think you know, maybe you don't, maybe you want them to close early on 
Sunday through uh, Thursday, <laughs> have later hours on Friday and Saturday. I, I don't know what what the what's on your mind in terms of concerns. Um, do do I remember? I remember Guy uh, saying, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that that you can't unduly restrict. Um, for instance, a bar, you can't just say a bar has to close at 9 p.m. You know, there's certain things that sort of come with being a bar that are, that are sort of reasonable expectations. Um, and that wouldn't be a reasonable thing that, that it, would, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't hold up to, to had a restriction like that. Um, didn't they go through this in, 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 with, uh, in the city with trying to limit, you know, making the bars close at, at I think it was one o'clock in the morning or whatever. And um, it was challenged in the, um, I think the court struck down any 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 additional restriction as being um, an unreasonable expectation for the, given the nature of the business. Or am I misremembering that? I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with that case. I I do know that the town, the city, did at least when I was in college have a one o'clock um, <laughs> mm -hmm. required closing time. Um, that which is different from other other places, but. Yeah, I, I do know that um, Guy's position on those requirements is, uh, I would say, more careful than some other um, advisors that I've heard on that particular instance of how, how restrictive is reasonable with regard to um, what the legislature calls, uh, I think, uh, time, place, and manner mm -hmm. restrictions, um, which, you know, he, he has advised that that means much less than you might initially think about how much you can regulate the operation of the business. Um, but I, I do think that a reasonable, reasonable hour restrictions, especially in a location that's in close proximity to residences wouldn't be mm -hmm. unreasonable. Um, I think actually the city of Buffalo has a, they did something that was very exciting at the time, which was legalizing all of their historic corner hubs, which had been zoned out like most places in the 70s. In their green code update, they made it so that a building that had previously been a corner pub could be a corner pub again, but it, they have a bunch more rules because it's in a neighborhood um, and not, you know, downtown that you would apply to their operation that, that in, I think also includes closing earlier than, you know, I think in Buffalo bars can be open till 2 a.m., but not these neighborhood zone um, corner hub locations. Would that concern be adequately addressed with, with uh, specifically um, limiting the amount of noise? Sure, how? Uh, well, that's the whole question of the whole noise thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. But, I mean, no, no, nobody would care if they were open, if they were quiet, right? Well, sure. Yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, the problem isn't always even just the noise inside the establishment. It's people coming and going. and Yes, they're congregating outside. Where, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which at certain times of the year could be an issue. But well, that, I, I, that could be an issue with, with similar businesses, which we are. Um, do we it could be an issue with an ice cream shop. Yeah, exactly. Um, do we adequately address that in the zone currently? We don't. I mean, I mean, adequate is, I would say we don't address that in the zoning currently. So um, if there's anything beyond not addressing it that is the threshold for adequacy, then the answer is no. <laughs> So basically, it's people are free to do what they will. Um, yeah, as long as they locate where we locate where we say it's okay for them to be, um, and their businesses look like we say they have to look. Yes. One one, one quick question on that. Um, I know from experience in Reston again, the um, depending on where it's something that's opened all night, for instance, a gas station. The one of the things we failed to address there that was a problem 
was the direction of the headlights because it gets dark. You know, here we're talking about dark at four o'clock or five o'clock in the evening, mm -hmm. yep. and headlights that shine going in or out of a or parked at an establishment shining into all the neighbors' houses could be an mm -hmm. issue. So does that come under site plan? Is I don't know whether site plan review. Yeah. Okay. That would be something that could be reviewed under site plan review. We don't have a specific criteria dealing with it, yeah. um, but it's certainly something. You know, we dealt with that on site plan review for a single family house on uh, Beardsley and yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. part yeah, right, <laughs> where the parking might shine a light into the neighbor, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the same thing with some of those horrible security lights that come on every time somebody moves and shines into everybody yes. else's house. And yeah, they go yeah. into the sky and everything else, right? We do have a site plan review requirement for dark sky compliant lighting. Yeah. So Good. that wouldn't be allowed. So, so far, um, well, I mean, last time we did have, when we talked about location, um, we talked about potentially restricting them to, restricting them to um, the Hamlet zones. Mm -hmm. um, and um, as I recall, we were very much divided on whether that was a, even that was a desirable thing to do. Uh, with some people arguing that, gee, it might be nice to have one in my neighborhood, and I'm not in the Hamlet. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so, um, if if it were treated like any other business, it would be limited to um, either the, either either the Hamlet neighborhood zone or the Hamlet zones, or Potentially the commercial zones. I guess that was the question: whether or not they, they could be in commercial zones that are not in any of the, either of those two places. Yep. And we um, last time we looked at what those parcels were. My sense was that most, but not all of you, thought that those parcels in the commercial zones were not good locations. Um, it's kind of what I remember. That's nodding, yes. Um, <clears throat> do we think is it so? Uh, would be would we be on board with 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 limiting them to Hamlet and, and Hamlet Core and Hamlet neighborhood? Um, I think the issue was well, what about what about um, businesses like Steve's? Mm -hmm. um, there, I think there's two options. It's not in a commercial there. zone either. No. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, one option there is a PDZ. Mm -hmm. Of course, you need a five acre minimum for that. But we just uh, do. We still need five acres in the new zone. We didn't. Uh, we didn't touch that section of the code, so. That's probably still there then. Yeah. But I mean, that too can be waived necessary. Um, so yeah, PDZ is um, one way to deal with it if we were outside of the Hamlet and have the neighborhood zones. If it was processing, it could be in the agricultural support. Sure. Um, but we're not talking, we're talking, we were focused specifically on the consumption and distribution component. Yeah. Leslie, Leslie, we're not, we're not hearing you. We're not hearing you. <laughs> you're, still, still you're still muted. <laughs> you're still muted, Leslie. There you go. Huh. Yeah, so, did, so I don't know what you're saying, but we didn't hear any of it. <laughs> That's a little strange. Watch if it gets muted again. Yeah. Um, no. Did anybody have trouble, a problem with it being limited to the central Hamlet core the or the Hamlet neighborhood? I remember, maybe I'm misremembering, I'm but I remember Catherine um, thinking that why should we limit it to just those places? Well, that what I was thinking is that it's the people on the, why would, I think I was thinking it the opposite way around is that it might be, 
unfair to say the Hamlet's the only place it could be because that's residential also. Yeah, there. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 So that was probably my my hesitancy is to say that we're going to stick everything by the people who live in the Hamlet. Well, some people might regard this as an amenity rather than something yeah, that, to be that's avoided. Not but... the, that, yeah, but that's not the point. It, mm -hmm. The point is that some of the people already live in the Hamlet and if they, you know, do they have to sell to move out because they don't want to have a store? And I'm not saying um, a pot, uh, seed, uh, you know, cannabis. It could be anything. They might not want to have um, a bread, a bakery or, you know, another thing that has a lot of scent and smell is a coffee roaster. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah great, great smell i think the that's no, all it is it's not the roasting part the roasting part is not a good smell it's very strong <laughs> that's already been decided as part of the zone we decided as part of the zoning that the um development that we wanted to restrict the development so we would have some rural areas restrict it to the res the whether it's residential or not district restrict it to the Hamlet and the Hamlet neighborhoods. That's what we already decided. I think it's independent of whether that use, that store is cannabis or not. Um, That's a point. The, the question is, should we change it? Should we change the zoning for cannabis and allow it other places that a bakery would not be allowed? And that doesn't make sense to me at all. Yeah. I mean, I'm okay with, by and large, I'm okay with treating like any other business yeah what you know we have we have size constraints already um we have location you know limitations we have appearance standards what the buildings need to look like um so the one thing that, that has that, that has been raised as a, as a potential problem for a neighbor would be um, smell uh, and um and that would be a problem with the with if, if um, well, it used to be a problem with smoking, but now that we've banned smoking for public places, uh, it's not an issue anymore. But if it were, um, if we if we said that um, you know smoking marijuana is regulated in the same way as tobacco smoking, um, that would pretty much deal with it, I mm -hmm. think. That is the default if you do nothing. Um, is it? Yeah, you have the ability to allow marijuana smoking in places that tobacco is not allowed. But if you don't do that, anywhere tobacco is not allowed, marijuana is not allowed. Plus, marijuana is never allowed in cars. In cars, right. You can't smoke in your car, huh? Nope. Didn't know that. I think it would be worthwhile looking at uh, setbacks, distances, um, from others or other sources, just looking at that, whether we want to look at that more than what's the state required. You mean as far as the uh, you know, uh, other uses, or are there other other facilities of a similar nature? In other words, you, you, want, both, to, you want to make both, your... both, 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 both. So, don't we have that with a commercial? Um, well, in the Hamlet neighborhood zone, the only yeah. place you can put them is on the corners. Um, so they wouldn't be all over the place. But in the Hamlet core, there's no restriction on how many or how close. Does it but matter? We could, we could still, I mean, instead of, you know, worrying too much about, um, uh, you know, distance and stuff, um, if it's not already taken care of, I mean, we can ask for air filtration, smell and, and mm -hmm. sound limitations right yeah um, if we if we were to allow smoking then we could add a, a requirement for filtration so uh, that no, I mean, if, it's a, if it's a just well yeah okay i think it's worthwhile doing um distances from things like the uh the park which is not included in the other list that uh, david had let, mentioned before and you don't want people to smoke in the park? Right. Or close. Okay. Or by close. That's the point. Not smoking. It's already public. They can't smoke. That's an right. issue. It's so, already done. Yeah. It's, 
it's having a store close by. And that's what the reason for having those uh, distances. Probably Jennings Pond as well. Um, the question then is, I mean, if you put any significant buffer from, sorry, I've got a car alarm outside. Oh, um, there it is. <laughs> you can barely hear it. Oh, it's no big deal. Okay. <laughs> And if you can't hear me, I'll stop and close my window. But um, the problem with a buffer from the park is the entire Hamlet core is going to end up within that buffer. Right. Unless you, you know, we'd end up by Unless default really, only allowing them in West Danby. Unless it was a really small buffer. Yeah. Even then, it would be pretty, it wouldn't have to be very big in order to capture a lot of the Hamlet core. So um, what what would be what would be the reason, Pat, that that would be a concern? Because it's uh, used by a large number of people, it, particularly children and families. Some might say so is marijuana. Yeah. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> That's the thing, and, and people are in playgrounds and out in their backyards in the Hamlet core too. I mean, when I when we were over at the town hall, I could see people, children playing, and right outside their house, right across the road. So I'm a little confused about this. Uh, how much buffer you're talking about? And because I think what we just did, if we do something like that, we pretty much say you can't have them. And that's, that's when we might end up in the restrictive process po uh, problem that we're really not allowed to do. Yeah, I agree. I mean, right now in the private property, any place, I mean, anybody could smoke in their backyard. Right. Um, with or without children present. You can't smoke in your front yard? <laughs> well, you can smoke in your front yard too. You want it on your front porch? Yeah. <laughs> sounds like the sounds like a song. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> the only place I know from that you absolutely cannot have in the past till, till the new laws, you can't smoke in the a, a national park. I mean, the, for instance, you. When I was a park ranger at Wolf Trap. If we even smelled it, and I was even though I was a volunteer, if I didn't say anything, I could be in charge of it. I could be in trouble. And if a park police came and found them, they went straight to prison. I mean, it was bad, but that was federal. That was yeah. a federal law. And the federal law, I don't know whether that's changed. And we don't have a national park here. So, uh, fire, fire hazard. Yeah. Uh, fire hazard. Right. It wasn't right. a fire hazard. It was only the. It was only marijuana. <laughs> oh. Oh, it didn't apply. It didn't apply yeah. to no. cigarettes. Apply smoking. To anything That's except weird. Marijuana. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, well, it's crazy. still a, an illegal substance in the, under federal law. Yeah. yeah, that was the problem. Mm -hmm. huh. So I'm not hearing a lot of support for buffering. Um, and How would you feel about a limit um, just to hedge the town's bets, a limit of two per hamlet? I don't think we're going to get one per hamlet. Maybe we may, I, I don't get any. think anyone would really like to get six. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dispensary hopping. <laughs> Like yes, bar like, like bar hopping. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, do, I don't have a I don't have a problem with that. I mean, you could always rescind it later, but it seems right. like a, a little safety valve. Yeah, I mean, something that gives us caution up front is probably a reasonable way to handle a lot of it. Or we could just throw caution to the winds and see what we get. But. Um, <laughs> uh, would it be a problem if we had it, if we turned out to be a Mecca for for uh, dispensaries or something? <laughs> I, I, think, I think Teresa's friends would be calling Danby something else. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, I don't, you know, I mean, the Hamlets are, I mean, West Danby, 
I mean, does there need to be more than one? I mean, I don't know. Well, I mean, and, and, and because of that, it, what's the probability there would ever be more than one? It, it, it's not much probability that there might not even be any at all, but you know, if, if you if it did, it would be the only business going in town. It'd be an yeah. interesting well, competition case. is always good. And that's good. practically true for Danby as well. You know, I, mean, I don't have a problem with limiting it to two hmm. for Hamlet. Well, the only my only problem with that is that we have to make it, we have to probably pass a local law to limit it to two for the Hamlet, right? Right. Oh, no. Whereas if we don't do anything, we don't have to do anything. <laughs> but if you think it's worth, if it's, if it's, if you think it's, if it's worth going to the, you know, the trouble and expense of passing a local law to add this constraint, then we could do it. But if it's just, well, we know, why should, you know, are we, are we realistically expecting it to be an issue that, that, that we need to act prophylactically to preclude? Not really. Probably not. I don't think so. No. And if not, then then we're uh, I'm here coming around to saying we don't do it, we don't need to do anything. You know, that we're adequately equipped to deal with them um, with the regulations that we already have in place for any business that wants to locate. Yeah. And we can treat them like any other retail business. Particularly given that unless we act, um, on-site smoking would be precluded. I, I don't think that applies inside a on-site consumption facility. Yeah. So well, I mean, if, that's, that... if that's the case, then you have to worry about the you know ventilation or right. exhaust stand ventilation right. blowing smoke into the neighborhood. Right. right. Which is something that the planning board could deal with in site plan review, mm -hmm. um, even absent uh, passing a law. But I do think it would be better to give them clear criteria to stand on. Um, yeah. And that would be a reasonable additional requirement for such enterprises. Mm -hmm. We make it a requirement to address it. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. I'm all right with that. Me too. Me too. So, um, I'm pat quiet. <laughs> um, oh, fine with me. I don't care. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you want to work that up, David? Then is a. Um, I'd be happy to I'll can, work that up and bring work. something to you, Joel, and. Um, Maybe we want to look at it at uh, we could look at it at the next meeting and then see if there's time to schedule a public hearing for the, the following. Meeting. Meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I haven't looked counted days on the calendar. It, it may have to be, you know, look at the second meeting. And we look at it in the second meeting in September. The public hearing, the second meeting okay. in October. Yeah, that's a. Uh, it's, there's nothing. Uh, are we under some, we're not under any real time constraint here anyway, are we? No, we would have it at least 30 day notice of anyone what's going after a license mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah, that would be the only question, precluding somebody from coming with a business. So if we have time enough to do it before that, that's great. Yeah. Okay, it sounds like a reasonable plan. So you can, you, you're copying, well, this is simple enough. You should be able to bring it back to us by the 21st. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, the, the, the role, the revision of the rules of procedure for privileges of floor um, is this something we want to look at in the absence of uh, Sarah being with us? So this is kind of originating with her. We could, in, in, in light of the fact that I didn't see it, even though it was embedded, um, maybe I we think it would be better to wait. Wait till the next meeting. I, I, 
I'm in favor of that. And uh, anybody else have any objection to us cabling it till the next meeting? Okay, I'm not hearing any. So why don't we do that? Um, level of operation. Where we are at the moment is uh, mass required for meetings in the main meeting room. I think only in the main meeting room. Um, of, is, was it limited to meetings of, of groups that have to meet? Do you like, mean, uh, you mean like planning people board, who town don't board. have a choice? Yeah, exactly. Um, where we're statutorily required to meet in person, um, absent the governor's order that allows us to meet remotely. That would include the planning board, the town board, BZA. Probably doesn't include the CAC, although that's arguable. So I thought we were talking, it was just, it was talking about gatherings, you know, meetings, gatherings where, you know, you have five people who are going to be sitting around a table. That's what I thought it well, I thought we included it too. I mean, well, I thought we, we I thought we excluded things like you know the Girl Scouts gathering, you know, having a right. meeting or or the or the community council meeting or you know, other such meetings. That's so they don't have to wear a mask. You don't have to be there. You know? Well, that yeah. well, it's not that it's, it's masks are optional. It's not that you don't you can't wear one if you want one. It it, oh. it may end up being an issue because of the with the youth program. Um, <clears throat> because they've asked for the, be able to use the place, especially as the weather changes since they lost the South Hill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that would mean that they would be required to wear them. And I don't know. I mean, we could say that they have to wear a mask the whole time, except for when they're having a snack. I don't know. It's just something it is like Girl Scouts. Yeah. And we know, you know, it's, 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 it's less threatening for, for young people than for old people. Um, it's, yes. much, it's a much smaller risk for kids than it is for... We, we don't know that for sure, we unfortunately. Know. We don't know about the long term still. We don't know about kids. the long term, but you know, it certainly in terms of the immediate effects of, of, of getting yeah, it. It's, well, it's... The long term is the problem. If a kid gets it and it's long term, it's a lot longer than if we get it and it's long term. This is true. Mm -hmm. We don't have the data and we won't for some time. Right. There's no right. data. There's right. not enough. But part of it is those are organizations where the public isn't part of it automatically included. Those organizations should be able to determine themselves how they want to be uh, protected to themselves. We shouldn't have to do that for them. Well, it's a town. I, I, I mean, I understand that, that thought um, at the same time. It's a town building. Um, well, we already uh, said we, like the Girl Scouts wouldn't have to do it. I think it, there's other uh, groups I must like have missed that, that conversation. <laughs> I must have not been there. <laughs> Maybe it must have were. been one of those meetings I missed. <laughs> it might it might have been. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, the I know so many people that are sick this week. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Really? Don Schoffler and his wife are still. No, no kidding. I mean, no. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I just, no, I mean, and that's just. Yeah, people, know, still, <laughs> people still getting sick. You know, no question yeah. about that. <clears throat> yeah. It's just that we stopped worrying about it. <laughs> Some people stop worrying about it. <laughs> yeah. I don't the know. bigger difference is with more people um, uh, vaccinated that the. Um, likelihood of getting really very sick is less than it was before dramatically yes. less percentage wise well and there in there now of course you know treatments if you do get sick that that lessen the severity correct which uh, did not exist two years ago. didn't exist in the beginning right in the beginning it was we didn't know what we we're dealing with and it was pretty deadly so yeah with, with re reduction it, it, on the other hand, it's, it's much more contagious than it was back then, too. Yeah. So it's easier to get. It's not as bad if you get it. Yep. Um, there's still the concern about the long term effects if you do get it. Um, is there anybody left that hasn't had it yet? <laughs> um, yes, Kevin hasn't somehow managed to escape so far. <laughs> um, 
uh, which you know, I unless uh, we get yet another extension from from Kathy Hochul, which I'm thinking might be less likely. Um, we will probably be meeting in person on the 21st because the executive order expires on, the, I believe, the 12th. Um, do we want to leave in place the the masking requirement for for our? Well, we want to leave in place a masking requirement for for anybody, and if so, for whom or for what? Right now, we're at meetings in the in the uh, main meeting room um, of groups that, that basically are required to be there. Um, that being the, the planning board, town board, BZA. Uh, well, it doesn't mean just the people that are required. It means the people who come also. Right, right, like if exactly. There's a required, like the, the, if we're right. required to be there and town people want to come, they need to know that that means they have to wear a mask also. Right, that's exactly correct. Um, it's anybody who anybody who has to be there and anybody who chooses to attend those meetings because we're trying to protect the people who have to be there yeah. from anybody else who might attend. I I'm fine with doing that. It's a month we're doing this every you know, every meeting we bring it up. Well yeah, because we just, would. Yeah. 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 And at some point, you know, we'll probably call an end to it, but there, is is that point now or or not? No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's very few places left that require it. Um, yeah. The hospitals still require it. And go it's in. It's still required in healthcare facilities and public transportation. I think is where, where, are the uh, the two places that still require it. Yep. And places that didn't are back to it. I mean, I you're allowed to go into the vets now, but you have to wear a mask. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And everybody in the veterinary office is wearing them. So, yeah, yeah, doctor's offices too. Yeah. It depends. Well, yeah, the doctor's offices started to let it loose, but then they they've taken. I've seen them re go back to not entirely free for all. Yeah, it depends. Depends on the office. Yeah, the last time I was in <laughs> the doctor's we, office, they still Jonathan went masks. to a doctor's. Jonathan went to a chiropractor appointment and nobody was wearing a mask. They didn't mm -hmm. require him to wear a mask. And, and on the same day, I went to a doctor's appointment where I had to sit out in my car, call them, tell them I was there. And yes. they let me, you know, it, yeah. one person at a time. And so it just depends on, depends yeah. on caution there... and responsibility. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, so how, how cautious the office is. Yeah. 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 Could I offer an update to something Joel said about the uh, executive order? Um, sure. Um, I, this maybe is a spoof page, but I'm, I'm just reading from something called jdsupra.com legal news. It says, as part of the 2022 adopted state budget, the New York State Legislature amended the open meetings law, blah, 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 to authorize public bodies to conduct meetings using video conference technology through June 30th, 2024. So if this is, if I'm reading this correctly and it's not a spoof, you're good for another two years as far as requirements go. That's it. Hmm. Yeah, I could share the page if you want to see it. It'd be good to, if you could share that, we'd appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, could you, Janice, could you arrange to so give me that for a moment? Can we just decide to continue well, doing what well, we're doing? Well, yeah, we can, <laughs> I think, I mean, Ted raises a good point and, and we definitely need to check it out. Um, in light of what he said, if indeed it, it, it would authorize us to continue to meet remotely instead of remote meeting in person, is it the, is it the, is it your desire to do so? Say that again, Joel. Um, if we can continue to meet remotely, is that what we want to do? It doesn't say we have to do no, it. No, no. No. But I mean, what I'm saying is that one of the things that I, I you know, I'm just going to throw this out here. I'm mm -hmm. sort of curious to see if we said that people, if we, we, if we had an open meeting in person and we said that everybody, everybody who comes has to wear a mask, 
the people who were complaining about not having open meetings um, might say, okay, let's go back to Zoom because I don't want to wear a mask. I mean, somehow this issue is, you know, it's going to keep around. But anyway, just a thought. Well, you know, it, we, we are committed um, to having it be possible for people to attend by Zoom anyway, even if we are there in person. So nobody, nobody has to attend in person in order to attend a town board meeting if we, if we decide to meet in person. The only thing, the only difference it makes is the people who, who don't have good, don't, don't, well, I mean, you can always attend by phone, but we don't, we only have audio if you do that. Um, but people who don't have a good internet uh, you know, in connection or who don't, for, you know, aren't plugged into the technology for whatever reason, they choose not to. Um, want to be able to attend in person. And of course they want us to be there in person as well. Those are the people who've been complaining that, you know, when are you going to meet in person so that we can, you know, go there and, 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 and you know, observe you in person uh, and make an, any comments that we want to make in person, as opposed to having to get at you by way of a Zoom meeting, which they don't, you know, they're not plugged into for one, one reason or another. Um, that's the real, issue here is um, if we if we um, if if we ourselves continue to meet remotely it, it does limit the access for some people to 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 our meetings um, all the people who have been attending by zoom can still attend by zoom it's only it's only the uh, it's only those people who who can't or choose not to well not for, for, for now I for now, I would like us to keep masks on in the town hall meetings. And yeah. if we have to meet, if we decide to meet in person, then I still, I want the people who come to have to wear a mask in that meeting. Yeah, that's where we are um, in the level of operation. And I, for my part, I mean, I detest wearing masks um, and you can't really see what's going on if you, if somebody got a mask on anyway, so. Um, what do you mean? You can still see what's going on. Well, I mean, and what they've complained about is they want to look us in the eyes and you can see people. You can see their eyes. eyes. Yes, that's about the limit of your facial expression is what your and eyes they, can And express. they can yell at us. They can raise their face and yell at us in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're going to wear a mask, especially if they're going to yell, I want to have a mask. Yeah, that's gone, right? Yeah. Part of the problem with a mask is being able to hear well. You know, when I have uh, at our church, it's set up so that you have to wear a mask unless you are speaking at the microphone just so you can be heard better. Yeah. But the trouble is, you know, we who are on the board. Are right uh, next to each other. Well, we're right next to us, each other. And if we were speaking, um, if we had to take a mask off every time we were speaking, it would be, it would be um, impractical. You basically no. have to wear the mask. We have to learn to use the microphone properly. That will solve a big part of that problem. Yes, Most people, true. We all have a tendency to have the microphone here and look at somebody over there and talk and then this. The microphone has to go with the mouth. Yep. I mean, we just have to learn. These are things that we can do. If that's what people want to meet in person, then they have to follow that same rule that we do. Right. We right. Um, so do we want to switch in person meetings? We, we if, if Ted's right, and it looks like it is, we may be able to continue meeting remotely if we want to, um, or we could, or we, or we can, and we have the option, we've always had the option, and some boards never stop meeting in person. Um, if right now, according to our, our um, constraint that we've self-imposed, you know, our, our level of operation, we're saying that if we meet in person, we want everybody masked. Yeah, it, and it, and we and we revisit this every single time, and the, and so far the, we are still allowed to meet. I don't I mean I'd like to. I couldn't read that whole thing that Ted presented. I don't know anything about it. We'd have to really look at it. And I wasn't yeah, yeah. sure that the word video conferencing covered Zoom, even though it is. I yeah, didn't, I think that's. I, what I couldn't meant. read it. Yeah. Um, and we, when we were talking about video conferencing before, that was a separate issue about video conferencing. For meetings meant the people who were at home had to have allow somebody else in the home. I mean, there's all kinds of things that come under that word, I think. 
So we, I couldn't read it and, that, and, and absorb that and listen. Mm -hmm. I just want to point out that um, that wasn't, I, I don't know, I, I, the chapter 56 of the laws of 2022 um, was the amendment to make permanent until July 1st, 2024, the expanded use of video conferencing by public bodies to conduct open meetings under extraordinary circumstances. And that's yeah. why we passed that law. So mm -hmm. I don't know that this is actually saying that we can have video conferencing meetings Willing yeah, I, I wonder. I, mean, I wonder right. the same thing whether this isn't a as reference as to, that, to that law, right. uh, as opposed to something new and different. Which the detail further down the page, specific, it basically said you can keep on doing it for another couple of years, but you have to basically pass a law or a resolution authorizing yourself to do it, and and create rules and regulations, which you've already pretty much got, except for the law. Well, we passed a local law to allow ourselves to have some people attend. Um, the, the, the constraint of the law, and it and, and remains to whether this is different, that law said that you had to have a majority of the board present right. at some location in person. Right. And then some members could attend remotely under those circumstances. And all it did was take away the requirement that that, that um, the person attending remotely had to have their location publicly known and the public had to be able to join them there. Right. Um, that's yeah. the part that went away. In fact, there's a paragraph in this which sounds remarkably like that. So I'd be referring to we that. Already, we did that. that. Well, so, we did we that. Already yeah. Did it. yeah, we so, did. We, we've authorized that. Right. What, but that does not authorize us to meet entirely remotely as we have been. Right. Um, that was only allowed under because of the uh, the, the, the governor's executive order. Which oh, when, is that, when, is that up? when is that up? The 12th? Uh, the 12th, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, unless, unless it was, well, in, in, in the extensions have been at the last minute every time, um, but, yeah. but unless there is an extension, you know, we will meet in, in person next time. And, uh, and unless we change well, Most our, people will, there'll be maybe some people, so long as there's a majority there, um, there may be some people who, who are not gonna meet in person, right? We could do that. We have right. to have at least, we have to have a quorum at least three. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you all go on, so I could stay home and you can go. No, you go. <laughs> <laughs> you're going. <laughs> if, it, if you're going, you're going to be chained to the desk and your mask is going to be ripped off your face. <laughs> were, were it I who were to decide, I mean, I would, I would choose to meet in person. I know at, you would. At whatever point we're willing to meet in person without masks being required. In other words, if I don't ever wear a mask, I'm okay with meeting in person. If I have to wear a mask, I don't want it. I'd rather, I'd rather meet remotely uh, than, than put but up with that. That's one thing nice about remote is that you don't have to wear a mask. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we, not, we may not have a choice in the matter. And, right. um, and if we meet on the 21st, I mean, I'm hearing the I'm, I'm hearing a majority saying that they want the mask requirement for those meetings to persist, at least for the moment. Um, we will all be wearing masks in order to do it. So, um, not all of us need to be there, but three of us at least would have to be there. Well, I, I'd like to, I'm willing to do that and wear a mask. And if I want to wear a triple mask, I'll wear a triple one or whatever I want to do. But I want to see whether the people who've been right. complaining, whether they actually show up because because this has been really the problem. People don't want it. They're, they're blaming us and they won't, they don't want to show up. I mean, they say they, they want us to meet in person. Okay. So if they meet in person, the rule is you have to wear a mask and mm -hmm. then let's see what happens. Yeah. Like, it's been, it's been interesting because I mean, I think some of our meetings, we've had more people. That's right. Uh, but, but it, what we haven't done, maybe <laughs> we haven't done anything really about helping those people who say they want to attend and they can't. Right. So I don't, you know, if yeah. this goes on for another month or two, you know, is there something? Well, unfortunately, some of the, some of the same people are saying that they want us to meet in person are also the ones who insisted it, that they they able to attend without wearing a mask. Right. Right. And um, I'm not going to enforce it if they come in and don't wear a mask. You know, um, well, right. then, then the rest of us will leave and you won't have a quorum. I mean, right. you can look well, at I mean, it a couple how, of different ways. How can we enforce the mandate? 
we can ask somebody to leave if they weren't wearing a mask, you know. But if they, they choose, but if, what, what if they don't? Are we going to call the police and call, can come in and call them away? Well, let's call the meeting. <laughs> I mean, that was, that was the issue with the West Danby, um, the, the Water District Committee, um, was they, for a while, I mean, it, it got resolved now because we said you can meet now because as long as the fire district allows you to have meetings without wearing masks, we're okay with them meeting without wearing masks. And so they've been meeting outside anyway, that's obviously not going to continue as of when the weather turns colder, but, um, you know, they, they were conducting meetings and, and, and then not wearing masks. And then I was in an awkward position of saying, well, you're supposed to be wearing a mask because it's a town meeting. Um, and if we're, we're, we're opening ourselves up to the same thing happening in the town hall, you know, where some people say, well, yeah, I'm coming. I'm not wearing a mask. What are you going to do about it? Um, um, as the timekeeper, I just want yeah, to- Yeah, I know. I was just- oh, We're past the, we're past the two hour limit again. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, we yeah. don't have a whole lot more to do, but a couple things. Two more items. Yeah, well, we, need we, don't to have to, we don't have to belabor this point. Um, the, the sense of the board is that if we meet to meet on the 21st, which we probably will, we will meet in person at the town <laughs> hall and masks will be required for everybody, correct? Okay. Yeah. yeah, which is essentially where we left off. So policy stays the same. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Do we, we don't have to. Do we need first? to extend the meeting for ten minutes? Yes, we do. Well, we I move need to extend more than I ten minutes. We're we... already twenty minutes past the ten minutes. I know. <laughs> I move that we extend the meeting till eight thirty. Second. Are you going to put the mask requirement into the public notice for the public hearing? Probably ought to. If it's going to be in in the town hall yeah so yes yes yes, <laughs> yes. okay Pat. were you waiting for me to roll call Connor? yes we already did it that's what, we did. That's what we we're doing okay. yes. got it keep going for until uh, for 10 minutes all right got all right, it. Uh, all right. Uh, well actually till 8 30 what what, what she, she constrained us even less than 10 minutes yeah yeah mm -hmm. Um, so there's going to be a pretty quick update on the budget process. I can do that if you want me to, Joel. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay. this will be really quick. We've got time, okay? Yeah, we set some goals for the ninth to get everything back in and to get everything going. Um, we do have some major things that we're looking at right now that are taking time. So as people are looking at their budgets, if you don't get it right in this, you know, get it in as quickly as possible and please call you know, and to get help. But some of the things that we're looking at that are taking time, we have to get those three trucks financed. So we have to have some good payment amounts that we can plug into the budget here at Highway to be able to move forward with that. The other thing is, is Joel's working on negotiations with the union. Mm. So of course, salaries are the big thing. And also we're reviewing the health insurance um, policies and what's, uh, and that's all part of the union negotiations. And those are big dollar amounts. And by the way, uh, Sarah said she wouldn't help. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. What was that, Joel? Well, of course, the last thing was whether or not uh, there'd be another board member participating in negotiations. And I just said, well, let's ask Sarah. I did. And she said, um, I'll, I'll try. Oh, that's good. Good. Um, so those are some big dollar amounts. We probably went with our first go around when we put in a preliminary budget or a tentative budget, these figures might not be exact, but they're gonna be pretty close, you know, and, and get, get some things in there that we can work with and get started with. Also here in the highway, the increase in fuel prices and we need to really yeah. address some of those types of things. So it's taking a little longer, but it's well worth it taking longer. I'm here if anybody needs to, to get any additional information or to help them. Uh, I've still got a few budget packets actually to get out and I'll be working with West Danby Water District as well. So it's coming along. We, we would like to be able to, and I'm sure, you know, Joel would like to be able to turn a budget into the town clerk, you know, before sep September 30th, which is the date. It, it may happen, it may not, but we're gonna shoot for it to get it in as quickly as possible. But we want some good figures to start with. So that, that's pretty much the update where we're at. And Laura, I want to, Laura, I want to thank you for uh, pushing this early. So we're not, uh, you're not scheduling it to get it at the absolute end date. We're trying early. Thank you. Oh, you're yeah. so welcome. Joel, Joel is uh, really big into, 
into tr getting this ball rolling. Yeah, I've been trying to try to get. Yeah, because there's a lot to try to yeah. get worked out, and not if we didn't. The way I see to... it is to get these things into the budget, the things that are for sure, you know, as much for sure as we can, the things that we really have to have. And then you can see, then we can look at, you know, reserve for the salt sheds, the capital projects, how much you want to put away for that, and what we're going to do with um, putting money away for the solar, how we can use some of the ARPA money to help out in some of these, and splitting things up. But that once we get that, once we get that tentative budget in, it's going to let you see where we're at as far as tax increases or whatever. So you can see where you want to go and then what things you want to, what where you want to put things, in, what where you want to put more in. Um, that, that'll be and, that'll be a great that'll be a great starting point. Get the things mm -hmm. that are we absolutely have to have that are absolutely there. Then you can. You'll see. Okay, I want to. We're we're willing to go this far. How right. far are we willing to go? And and putting things down. So the capital projects all falls into it because that's going to be, you know, one of the things that you're going to have add-ons with. And and I think everything's uh, coming along good. And putting it all together, getting it started. Mm -hmm. um, we we routinely pass a local law to override the tax cap. Um, the probability with inflation running at like eight, 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 over eight percent that we can stay under a two percent cap is um, pretty slim, um, and it, it would be it would be prudent for us to pass that local law again. Um, and then I don't want to wait till the last minute to pass. It. Um, there's no reason not to do it sooner rather than later. So um, so I'd like to set a public hearing to to put it in place. Um, it need not be at the next meeting, but it could be like first meeting in October. Um, so, which is when the first meeting in October is October 4th. So I move that we schedule a public hearing on October 4th for a local law to override the tax cap. I'll second, second. that. Oh, oops. <laughs> Pat can have it. At 6, at, at 6 okay. p.m. Yeah, Pat. <laughs> At 6 p.m. Right. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? No. Nope. Um, Janice. Hi. Okay. Connors. <laughs> Hunter. Yes. Woodward. I yes. Fine. Canyon. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fun in town hall. <laughs> Uh, yeah. got are we going to schedule meetings for uh, the town board to, to, to talk about the budget? Um, we should. the last minute? Um, well, I mean, but those, we could do that at the next meeting. Okay. We'll, we'll see how far we've got. That could so be on the agenda for next back. time. Um, so you have why don't we put that on? And I just went to the uh, webinar. One of the things they suggested was that if the town board members are uh, involved earlier, things go better. Exactly. So it might be better to do it earlier rather than later. I absolutely agree. Yeah. yeah. So um, we could we could put scheduling at the next meeting. Yeah. Um, other things for next time. One thing that didn't get on from last, the last time was the union negotiations. Well, I mean, it, what was on last time was whether anybody would help me out with those. Right. Um, and okay. um, I don't know if you missed it, Janice, but uh, I asked Sarah and she said she would help. Okay. Oh, so the, the cannabis uh, consumption site stuff. Right. It's coming uh, up next time. Yeah. Rules of order. All right. Is again, right? Public hearing about the Hamlet. Right. And budget meetings. I don't know if anybody caught anything else. There will no doubt be other things. Yeah, you, you did mention the rescheduled um, hearing. I, I, but I, yeah. think, yes. uh, and I do think that we do need to do that suggestion Ted made about making sure that people know there's a mask requirement if it's in public, mm -hmm. in person. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. Yep. We should also make sure that the microphones are all. Um, have yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. We'll see how how well we do because it's been a whole year since we did it. 
last time we had an in-person meeting was in was August, wasn't it? Last 2021. That one meeting. <laughs> we had didn't we have two? It wasn't like July and August, and then it shut all shut know. down again. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever it was. Okay. Yeah. It's not like we have no experience with, uh, you know, meeting at the town hall with the microphones and the Zoom set up because we did, we, we were all set and we did it for a couple of months. It was not without its issues, but. No, um, and those issues can get worked out. It doesn't have to be. Right, exactly. Time. Exactly. We just pick up where we left off. So it's the mandatory timekeeper once again. Yep. yep. We're, we're done. out of time yeah. and we're, we're also done. out of agenda. Did you adjourn, Joel? Yep. Yes, yep. he did. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. Hey, good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye.